To use Echopad with AudioBus, you want to make sure that you always launch AudioBus first. So check your multitask bar. If you have any other um, audio apps open, you want to make sure that you close them out. You can do that by touching and holding an icon until it starts shaking, and then press the little minus button to close it out. So always make sure that you do that before launching AudioBus, um, whether you're using Echopad or not, just any AudioBus compatible apps. It just makes everything run that much smoother um, and solves well over half the problems that I've ever heard of people dealing with with AudioBus. So always launch AudioBus first. So once we've launched AudioBus, um, you want to choose an input app. So here we'll just use the DJ app. and then choose an effect slot if you're going to use Echopad in the effect slot. Um, it works in all three, but most people will use it as an effect, so you can just go ahead and launch that. And then an important step here is to make sure that you have an output app connected. Um, I've had quite a few uh, support requests saying that they, somebody saying that they can't get any kind of sound out of Echopad and that they can't get it to work in AudioBus. And unfortunately, even a couple of negative reviews, it claims that it doesn't work with AudioBus, but it absolutely does. You just need to have a speaker output or something connected in the output slot in order to hear it. So make sure you do that. So once you have uh, everything connected, then you can start playing. But first, for here, I've got to open up a uh, load of track in, in DJ. Okay, so you can see uh, we're starting to get some input signal. Um, in Echopad, you can see the red glowing light, so we know we have sound coming into it, and we can obviously hear it now. So, we, in the main interface here, we have these colored control rings. Um, they all do different things. The blue one controls the delay time and feedback. So, if I go up higher, it's higher feedback level. If you go to the left, it's faster, shorter delay times. And to the right, it's longer delay times. And you could actually get Echopad to self-oscillate like a real tape echo or analog delay will by just raising the uh, feedback level above the white line here. Additionally, we have the uh, red ring over here which controls the uh, tone of the actual echoes. So it allows you to emulate different analog and tape style echoes that um, have you know different tones to them. Some of them the echoes are very washed out and dark and muddy. Others are really thin and um, tinny in tone so you can adjust that with a red ring. If you go up higher you get a thinner tinnier sound and if you go down lower to the left you'll get a darker muddier tone. So you can really hear that when it feeds back well. So it's useful for getting different kinds of tones, um, depending on what, what you're looking for in your mix. The white control ring here is for controlling stereo position, so you can use that to move between right and left speakers. You can use that as an effect, or you can use that you know, um, just for your mixing. Uh, in the top corner, or top left here, we have the record button, and that's used to just record your entire performance down to a WAV file. So you just tap that once, and you'll see it begins recording, and then tap again, stop recording, and it lets you know that the file has been put in your iTunes file sharing folder, and then you can go into the export menu to um, export it to audio share or to use audio copy paste to paste into another app. So but we'll go over that stuff a little bit later. Now up here we have the motion looper. Um, you just use tap gestures and pull down and release gestures to control it, but we'll go over that later on. But what the motion looper does is it lets you automate effects. So you record your effects movements on screen, just like, um, kind of similar to an audio looper. So I'll just do a real quick demonstration, but it basically lets you automate your effects quickly and easily. So. And then you can re-trigger it. touch and hold to clear. So we'll go over that later in uh, more detail in the motion loopers uh, tutorial. Over to the right here you have the audio looper which um, is a delay based looper uh, with a feedback control slider here 
what that lets you do is do um, different kinds. You know, if you wanted to do Frippertronics style, old kind of tape style um, looping where the loops slowly fade out over time, you can do that by adjusting the feedback settings there. So that's just, again, similar to the motion looper, just quick taps to, to grab a section of audio. So I'll do a quick demo there. Stop the music so you can see that that loop's been captured. And we'll go into greater detail with that um, in the audio loopers tutorial. So we'll start the music back up. Um, the top, <coughs> top slider here is um, used to control effects Oop, affects wet dry mix, so that just balances your amount of um, affected signal with your dry signal. The effects hold button is um, used, it's been on for the entire uh, demo so far, but what it does is it just leaves the effects on the whole time and freezes them in, in place wherever you last left them. So it's similar to a chaos pad uh, freeze function. If you have that off, then the effects are only applied when you fingers are on screen so you don't hear any effects being applied now but then I touch over there and then same thing so we'll just leave it on for the rest of this tutorial um, to access more controls you can tap this little button in the top right corner here and it exposes the different sliders and uh, system functionality for echo pad so I'm gonna go ahead and restart the music so we don't lose audio for that So these um, other controls that we have here, over the left we have the master volume control for echo pad, just controls your master output volume, and then a quick mute switch. These sliders all control delay time, uh, or de the delay parameters that you can also control with the blue and red rings um, that we showed earlier. Over to the right you have the LFO routing. You can route the LFO to either the output low pass filter, which is controlled with this slider, or you can route it to the delay time to get modulated delays. Uh, we'll go over that later on. The reverb is turned on by just sliding the slider. It's not really a good example because there's just a lot of bass right there. So that's how you control the reverb. Then in the middle here, we have the global beats per minute for echo pad for beat sync delays. So you can tap in with the keyboard um, enter a delay time, and you can do it to the decimal point, um, or you can use tap tempo. And then turn on beats per minute sync, BPM sync, and you can see down there you've got a tempo for uh, your delays to sync to now. So now all the delay times are going to be synced to that tempo. Loop sets beats per minute um, just makes your first audio loop that you create will set the global tempo once you've created the loop. Main loop through effects allows you to apply effects to an audio loop after you've recorded it. So you would turn that on after you've recorded the loop. Enable input is uh, pretty self-explanatory. It just either enables or disables audio input. So if I have it off, you hear nothing. And if I have it on, you hear the signal coming through. Background audio is to allow um, audio uh, echo pad to process audio in the background or not. It's always on by default if you're connected to audio bus so you don't have to worry about it. Low latency allows you to get lower latency on some of the newer devices. If you're using an older device and you're getting some pops and clicks in your audio, make sure that you have low latency off. Audio trigger loop um, is used with the main audio looper up here and it actually will start recording your loop once um, it detects signal. You have a utility function here, which allows you to reset the current session quickly to a, just a fresh default setting, or delete, uh, delete all WAV files in order to clear out space um, on your device. And that just gets rid of all the recordings that you have currently stored in EchoPad. Then down here we have the save, load, import, and export menu, which allows you to save presets for the motion looper and for your effect settings, and also use audio copy paste 